Hey guys, so today we're going to talk about is it worth it to spend 10 grand on the GFX 50S? Yeah? So if you don't know who I am, I'm Sam, and recently I've partnered with Fujifilm to test out a couple of the bits of cameras, like the X-H1 and the GFX 50S, and I, I... You guys have got me, I'm not gonna lie, but for today, we're gonna talk about the GFX 50S. So, let me get, let me get my book. I got a book. I hope you don't mind that I, I got a book. So, the GFX 50S, I've taken it up north, and uh, I live in Perth, Western Australia, and I've driven 12 hours up, and we tested the hell out of this camera. What it is, is it's a medium format camera. I'm not gonna lie, it's very heavy. It's a 51.4 megapixel camera, so if you're gonna crop, you're gonna crop. Like, you get, everything is gonna be sharp. When I reached out to Fujifilm and they responded to me, they told me that this thing would be also pretty good at video. If I had to pick, I think I would stick with a photo kind of element to this because that's really what this camera is. From personal experience, when you use them, these buttons on the back, they're not, you don't feel them, if you know what I mean? Like, when, when I use it and I'm tapping, I sometimes I feel, feel like I haven't, but 90% of the time I'm looking in the electronic viewfinder, which is fantastic. It's, it's, perfect another thing that's really helpful is i really like the monitor the monitor is a it's a big thing it, it, i love that it shows you if i'm gonna i don't have any batteries in it that's an idea so this camera does 14-bit raw photos and also does 8-bit raw plus jpeg so you can take your pick but everyone says the jpeg on uh, fujifilm is great but when i was taught photography just using raw i stick with raw it's just easier for me so a couple of the downfalls about this camera it is a beautiful camera i love it mainly for portraits i tried it with landscape i also shot the the stars with it uh out up north there was next to no light pollution so we shot milky way because it's one of the perfect times to do it here now i shot something incredibly underexposed because with this camera the dynamic range you can literally have your shadows so black and you can pull it out with you can pull it right out. Even with the highlights, it just so... I don't get it. I, I, I'm a run and gun shooter, so a lot of the time, I don't shoot on aperture priority, and I probably should, but when I'm shooting, I'm swapping settings, and I'm going for it, and I either have my shadows too underexposed or my highlights too overexposed. The issue with my 6300, I shoot Sony, my Sony 6300, shadows, you can pull out. Your highlights, they're gone. Forget about it. This, they both, they both come out, and I just, it's stunning how beautiful the image is and the colors. So some of the downfalls about this camera. It's big and bulky. Uh, after an hour's use, my arm was already getting tired. It's uh, it's big and bulky, so after a while it gets, it gets pretty heavy, and on top of that, the lenses are heavy. Uh, this is a 23mm f4. Uh, my favorite is the 110 f2, but produces such beautiful images that I kind of just forget about it. I could use straps. I think I was told I had to with this camera. I think it's somewhere in one of the emails. <laughs> uh, please don't. Please keep 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 working with me. Please, I beg you. These are these are great. These are great. <laughs> Here in Australia, you can pick one up body only for ten grand. Maybe nine 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 if you're lucky. Maybe nine 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 eight if you're lucky. Uh. The batteries as well in this camera they don't last very long. Uh, let me give you a comparison. A6300, the batteries on that last half an hour. The batteries on this last about an hour and a half, two hours. The batteries on the X-H1, give or take 45 minutes to an hour. That's how long I've gotten. And I always shoot with a battery grip, so I've gotten two batteries out of that. So my final verdict with the GFX 50S is should you buy it? If you can go to your local camera store and you can trial it, like you can rent it out for a week, absolutely give it a go. Although this camera, what it can do, the Canon 1DX Mark II can also do that for a couple grand cheaper. The Hasselblad, if you're gonna look at getting a Hasselblad medium format camera, this is also the same thing. And based on research, I haven't played with the Hasselblad, but I like the look of this a lot better. I trust Fujifilm's colors more than I do any other system. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't really know what else to talk about. Okay guys, so that's a quick video about the GFX 50S. It's not an in-depth review, but 
after a month's usage, I gotta say this camera is beautiful. Everything it does, you just don't regret doing it. Should you buy it? Yes, if you have the money. If I had to pick between the X-H1 and the 50S, the X-H1 is the way to go because 90% of the time of my trip, I use the X-H1 and I loved it so, so much. All right, guys, thanks for watching. It's, uh, I gotta pack these up because they're going very soon and I'm very sad. You can take this, but please don't take my, my you can take, don't take my X-H1. Please, please. You can have my Sony and then you can smash it. I'll give you that. Yeah, it was worth a try. All right, guys. I'll catch you later. Peace.